Hi, I'm Sean with Catalina Rug, and in this video, we're going to be talking about Persian rug prices. So this topic of the prices of Persian rug is one of the most requested topics that we have, and uh, one of the topics that we get the most questions about. So we decided to make a video about it, and uh, we've been trying to figure out what's the best way to present this information. And ultimately, we decided that we're going to break down the pricing of Persian rugs into three major categories, which is um, we're going to be talking about new Persian rugs and how the variables, what the variables are that affect the prices of new Persian rugs. And then we'll talk about semi-antique Persian rugs. So these are uh, Persian rugs that are no, lo no older than 60, 70 years old. And the variables that affect that category. And then finally, we'll be talking about the pricing of antique Persian rugs. So these are rugs that are over 100 years old. Uh, because the variables uh, with these three categories are a bit different, but also they share some variables, we decided to break it down this way. And so if you're interested to learn more about how the prices of Persian rugs are determined, then you can stick around and all that is coming up now. All right, let's get into it. So the first category, uh, as mentioned, we're going to be talking about are new Persian rugs. So these are rugs that are usually new or maybe up to like five to 10 years old, but relatively new Persian rugs. So uh, there are several different variables that affect the prices of these rugs. And uh, we'll start with the first one, which is cost of labor. So uh, the thing with labor is that usually it gets more and more expensive every year. So this is something that affects the cost of uh, newer rugs. Typically what happens is that uh, with every year, the cost of labor goes up and so the cost of newer rugs do go up. Another thing that uh, determines the price of the newer rugs is the material. So whether the foundation is made from cotton or wool or it's a uh, silk, and um, also the type of colors and the type of dyes that are used in the material of the rug and uh, the quality of the wool. So like how oily the wool is, uh, where the wool is sourced from, is it sourced locally or is it sourced from like internationally? So for example, like New Zealand wool, um, this all changes the, the pricing when it comes to the material. And another thing to note about the material is that usually just like with the labor, it does get more expensive every year. So we can expect that with the, every year, the newer Persian rugs are gonna have more cost when it comes to their material. So the next variable we're gonna be talking about when it comes to the pricing of newer Persian rugs, it has to do with the design and the colors and that's is the design beautiful? Does, it, does the colors of the rug, do they complement the design of the rug? Um, are the colors harmonious? Do they work together well? So for example, do the colors in the border of the rug, do they match well with the colors in the field of the rug? And are the colors that are being used in the field of the rug complementary to the design of the rug? So this is uh, a bit of a subjective, variable but it, it's about harmony and a combination of colors and uh, colors complementing design and each other so this is a pretty important um, variable that's that's used for the pricing of the rug and another uh, very related topic to this is how unique the design is so usually the more unique the design the less you would see at this type of design the more expensive the rug would get uh, same thing when it comes to the colors. Are the colors being used in the rug really unique? Um, are these really unusual colors that are being used that you don't typically see in this type of Persian rug? So this is another uh, variable that's used to determine the price of the newer rugs. So the next variable that we're going to be talking about are the the skills and the craftsmanship of the weavers that are working on the rug. So this is about the experience they have, how skilled they are, and also if they're working under a master weaver. So obviously the more experienced, uh, the more uh, skilled, the better the weaving is going to be. And if they're working under a master weaver, for example, if they're working at a workshop under the Alaboff uh, signature or in an Iran Co workshop, 
then uh, you're typically going to end up with higher skilled workers and better weaving. And something that's very related to this is how even is the weaving of the rug. So the more even the, the weaving that's being done, the better the rug is going to look because everything is going to look consistent. And um, what affects that is the consistency of speed that the workers are working at and the pressure that they use to weave the, the rug. So uh, when it comes to a smaller rug, this is not as big of a deal because you're dealing with one weaver as long as he or she is being consistent with their speed and the pressure they use throughout the entire weave, then the rug is going to have pretty even weaving. Where it gets trickier is when we're dealing with larger rugs. So when we have let's say like a 7x10, 8x10, 9x12 or larger and we're dealing with at least two or maybe three uh, weavers working on the rug at the same time. Is the pressure that they're exerting when they're weaving consistent? Are they working at the same speed? And so th they really have to be synchronized and work together for the rug to ultimately end up with an even weave, which is really important when it comes to the price of the rug. So the next variable we're going to be talking about is the straightness of the rug and how symmetrical is the design. So when it comes to straightness, well, it's pretty straightforward. Um, if the sides of the rug look pretty straight, if the edges of the rug look pretty straight, of course, this is as straight as humanly possible. These are um, hand knotted rugs after all, so you're not going to get a perfectly straight rug like in a machine made rug, uh, but it should be as straight as possible. Uh, same thing when it comes to uh, symmetry. So uh, one way to determine this is take a look at the medallion of the rug if it has one. Is the medallion centered in the rug? Are all the patterns uh, that are in the rug, for example, corner pieces that are being used in the, the corners of the field? Do they look symmetrical? Do they match each other? And are they aligned properly? So this is another important variable that affects the pricing of the newer Persian rugs. So the next variable we're talking about is RAJ or knot density or KPSI. Uh, I think this is an important variable, but often is overemphasized. Uh, and the reason is that it really depends on the design of the rug. So typically what happens with Persian rugs is that often the higher the knot density, the higher the price of the rug. However, uh, really the knot density depends on what kind of design is being used. So for example, if we're uh, talking about a, a, a Hariz rug that has a geometrical design and it doesn't have a lot of details and not a lot of curvilinear patterns, then it doesn't really need a high knot density. So for that given design, uh, average knot density of let's say 144 knots per square inch is enough. Um, however, if we're dealing with, uh, let's say, a Tabriz rug or a Qom or Esfahan or Nain, where you have a lot of floral patterns and you have a lot of intricate designs, then a higher knot density usually means that more details and more intricacies in the patterns are visible. And so it's not going to look obscure. It's going to look more clear. It's like similar to uh, the pixels on the uh, uh, computer monitor or on a television screen. The higher the knot density, the more clear and visible it's going to be. So this is an important topic, but really uh, the takeaway here is that it depends on the pattern of the rug and does the knot density support the pattern that's being used. And um, of course, another important thing is if the rug is silk or silk and wool, then usually the higher the knot density, the more expensive it's going to be because those are typically the rugs that do have really intricate designs and a lot of details, which need the higher knot density to support those details. So another variable that affects the prices of new Persian rugs is uh, what type of Persian rug is it? What brand is it? So for example, if we're talking about a Tabriz rug versus a Kashmat rug, well, obviously Tabriz has a bigger brand recognition. It's, it's the most popular type of Persian rug. So there's going to be more demand for it. More people are going to recognize that brand. So it's typically going to demand higher prices. 
uh, even if the skills of the weavers that made the rug and all the other variables are the same, just the fact that it's a Tabriz, it's gonna mean that it's gonna be a higher price because there's a higher demand for it. So uh, definitely it doesn't mean that just because it's a certain brand, it means like it's better quality, but because it's a certain brand, uh, it's, gonna, it's gonna be more popular and therefore it could have a higher price if all the other variables are held constant. So that's another um, important variable when it comes to the pricing. Uh, another variable that's very related to the brand is the workshop. So if a rug is made in a workshop, typically it's gonna be more expensive and it depends on the brand of the workshop. So for example, Alabaf or Saber or one of these popular workshops, uh, those rugs are gonna typically demand higher prices than let's say a workshop that's just up and coming. Uh, and by the way, if you wanna learn more about Persian rug workshops, we have a couple really good videos that we cover uh, eight different workshops. So take a look at that to learn more about workshop rugs. But this is um, an important variable as well. If we're talking about city rugs that could be possibly made inside of signature workshops. So um, this is something else to look out for. So the final variable that we're gonna be talking about when it comes to the pricing of new Persian rugs is if the rug was purchased through a middleman or was it purchased directly? So of course, if the rug is purchased through a middleman, well, the middleman, whether they're in the bazaar, they're a merchant there, um, they're gonna be taking a cut uh, for their profit and for their work. So that usually increases the price of the rug. However, if the rug is purchased directly from, let's say the tribe or the village or the workshop, then there's gonna be cost savings because you're cutting out the middleman. And just a quick plug here at Catalina, majority of our inventory is sourced directly uh, from whether it's the workshop or village or tribe. So we are usually cutting out the middleman and passing on the cost savings. So um, this is another important variable uh, that determines the pricing of new Persian rugs. Now moving on to the prices of semi-antique Persian rugs. So again, these are rugs that are typically no older than 60, 70 years old, and also they're not new. Um, so whatever we talked about when it comes to the variables that affect the new Persian rugs, such as their material, their design, the colors, uh, the, the weavers, and the straightness of the rug, all those variables, they come into play when it comes to semi-antique Persian rugs, but also what comes into play is the health of the rug. Uh, so when it comes to the health of the rug, there's variables that we want to take a look at, which we're going to talk about now. So when it comes to the pricing of semi-antique Persian rugs, we really start paying attention to the condition of the rug because of course we're dealing with older rugs. So one of the variables that's really important when it comes to the condition is the, the repairs. So has there been any repairs on this rug? If there's no repairs, well, that means that the rug is gonna be more expensive. And if there are any minor repairs, are those repairs noticeable or not? And if there are any major repairs, well, typically that means the rug will be heavily discounted, or in our case at Catalina, we wouldn't even offer that in our inventory. Uh, the next thing that we'll take a look at is, are there any color runs? So when a rug is older, it's been washed several times, uh, and usually it's professionally washed, uh, and what we wanna take a look at is that over time, has there been any color run in the rug? So of course, no color run would be the best circumstance, which would demand the highest prices. So the other variable that's very relevant to the pile is how evenly the pile is being worn. So if the rug has been used in a traffic area, then uh, was the rug rotated and is the pile worn evenly on all sides? So that means that one side it doesn't have like a high pile and the other side has a low pile, but everything is worn out, let's say to a medium pile. So this is another important factor. And ultimately, when it comes to uh, semi-antique Persian rugs, uh, the pricing is usually lower when it comes to newer Persian rugs, and that's because the cost of material and the cost of labor go up every year, and this increases the prices of the newer Persian rugs. So if all of the constants are held the same, 
uh, let's, let's say the same type of material, the same beauty of the rug, same workmanship, then semi-antique Persian rugs are usually going to be less expensive than new Persian rugs. So finally, we're going to be going over the prices of antique Persian rugs. We'll get into this topic a lot deeper in another video, but we're just going to make a few comments about it here. So uh, antique Persian rugs are Persian rugs that uh, are at least 100 years old or older. And uh, when it comes to their, the variables that affect their pricing, of course, everything we talked about uh, for new Persian rugs, all those variables come into play, as well as all of the uh, condition variables we talked about when it comes to semi-antique Persian rugs. So in addition to all those variables, uh, what affects the pricing of antique Persian rugs are, is the age. So usually the older the, the antique Persian rug, the more expensive the rug is going to get. So a rug that's, say, 100 years old versus a 200-year-old rug, if all the conditions are constant, then the older one will obviously, obviously be more expensive. Uh, another thing that really matters is how artistic is the rug. So certain antique rugs are going to be very artistic and just the design of the rug was really unusual and artistic. That's going to uh, make the rug more expensive. And of course, how rare the rug is. So this came into play when we talked about the variable that affects newer Persian rugs but it becomes exponentially more important for older Persian rugs. So, for example, if there was a really special workshop that no longer exists and they don't uh, make these rugs anymore, or they just made a few uh, of these type of rugs, then that's going to make the antique Persian rug more rare and therefore more expensive. All right, so this concludes our video on Persian rug prices. We tried our best to break down this topic into something that's digestible, but we'll be getting into this topic more later with other videos. But I hope that you found this video helpful. So if you want to learn more about uh, the pricing of Persian rugs, we have a great blog on our website, CatalinaRug.com. It's called Persian Rug uh, Prices uh, Guide. You could take a look at it there. Also, you can take a look at our collection and uh, check out all of our Persian rugs and you can refer to them to understand better uh, the pricing of Persian rugs. And if you're watching this video on YouTube, then I invite you to like and subscribe and comment below and I will see you in the next video.